Well, hi folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with southernindianaweather.com. I want to do a little quick video here, as quick as I can, with covering some information. On the upcoming solar eclipse, August 21st, uh, we are about 10 days from now as I'm recording this, and uh, it's going to be an awesome sight. Unfortunately, southern Indiana is not in the path of totality, so if you look at the graphic behind here, which sort of illustrates uh, you know, what you would see in a total solar eclipse, you'd be able to view the corona. We're not going to be able to see that here in Indiana. We will have what's called a partial eclipse. And basically what that has is the, is, is the moon uh, comes in between the earth and the sun and the moon sort of blocks out. Now, uh, in order to view that, you've got to have some safety glasses. And we're going to talk about that in just a second, about where to get those and what to do. But what we will see here in southern Indiana is some version of a partial eclipse. And so it'll be about a three-hour duration uh, over this. And what you'll see is you just have a little notch sort of knocked out of the sun first by the moon. And progressively over the course of the next hour, it'll eat away further and further. If we were in totality, we would be able to see the totality. Then over the course of the next hour or so, the totality, by the way, only lasts about two minutes and 40 seconds at the most down around Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Um, but uh, then it progressively over the course of the next hour, hour and a half uh, on either side of these uh, gradually goes away. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Right now the weather looks like it's a typical, a typical Monday afternoon in late August where we're probably going to fight some clouds and maybe even some pop-up thunderstorms during the heat of the day because it's so humid. So we'll have to see. That's the way the modeling is shaking things out right now. But be sure to check us out on Southern Indiana Weather on Facebook, and we'll give you some daily updates on the weather. Now, if you want to view the sun, of course, you cannot view that directly with your eyes, so you need these awesome solar glasses. And you can get these with a lot of different places. And so uh, let me sort of put these on, not the easiest to put on whenever you are holding a phone camera at the same time. Uh, I can't see you, and uh, I think we're still looking at me. Yeah. Uh, if I do this, I can see you. But what these do is, is, is this, this black polymer that they have in there completely blocks out everything but the brightest light. I, in fact, I can stare up at my ceiling fan right now. I can't even see my ceiling fan. The light's on it. And I got three light bulbs in there. Uh, I can't even see it. The only thing I could see with this would be the sun itself because the sun's so bright. For our purposes, you know, during totality, you'd be able to take these off during totality. But we're not going to have totality in southern Indiana, so you're going to have to keep these on anytime you're looking at the sun. And you say, well, why? Well, have you tried looking at the sun? Uh, you look away very quick, don't you? Because it hurts after you look at it for more than just a millisecond. It just, it, it's just so intense, it sort of burns you. If you stare into the sun for several seconds, you will actually burn your retinas out, and you could cause permanent blindness with that. So don't recommend that you do that. Some people would say, oh, I can take some welder's glass and put some... Uh, number 14 welder's glass in front of me that will give a green tinge to the sun make it look kind of cool i guess but uh it will block out it's basically a, a thick neutral density filter when you do that um, but it's not going to block out enough and you can still cause damage to your eyes if you use that long enough same way with using a neutral density filter for your camera it's just not going to work you need special solar filters to be able to do that now uh, you can buy these uh, buy these uh, glasses in multi packs, like you know this one for example here. This little multi uh, pack that I had was uh, a little five pack that I bought off of Amazon, and I only paid like I don't know six or seven bucks. But that was you know two or three months ago when I bought it. They are jacking up the prices unfortunately now. So if you've planned in advance, you could have saved some money. Uh, this, you know, for my camera, what I plan to do is I bought a little solar filter paper here uh, and just a little four inch square. And this is from Thousand Oaks Optical. Got it for $9.99 off of Amazon. See that I cut a round circle in it. Basically what I did is I took two UV filters. I cut it and I sandwiched in between it. The silver side goes out facing the sun to reflect things away. The black side faces the camera, uh, faces the actual lens. Just screw that onto the front of the lens. I sort of made my own filter out of that with special paper to be able to do it. There's some others. Botter Planetarium makes a special paper that's a little bit more expensive, though, because it's a little higher quality. But to give you an example of what uh, what these things can do, this uh, this is an example of a picture of the sun that I took a couple of days ago uh, with this special filter that I made from that Thousand Oaks optical paper. And I took it with this particular DSLR setup. I got my Nikon D5100. I've got my 55 to 200 uh, lens on here. I just zoom it all the way out to 200. Got a kit. I've got a 2x teleconverter on there as well, so it's effectively 400 millimeters. Uh, that does not fill up the screen. This is heavily cropped, but you still get a pretty decent image out of it. As far as settings for what I did, this, uh, you know, if I go down into Adobe Lightroom, which is what I process all of my images for, 
Uh, I shot this at ISO 100. That's your base ISO on this particular camera. Some of them are about 200. Uh, but the ISO is how sensitive your imaging sensor in your camera is to light. Um, that's in a nutshell. It's more complicated than that, but that's the nutshell. Uh, I set it to my base ISO of 100 because that uh, produces the cleanest possible image that I can. You increase your ISO, you generally increase the noise, which is the graininess in your image. I kept it at that. And then I shot at f5.6. That's your aperture, which is sort of the iris, if you will, of your lens. If you looked in, sometimes uh, you, know, you have a small... Uh, you have a small aperture like this, and then you can open it up wider to let more light in. 5.6 is sort of somewhere in between, but f5.6 to around f8 is usually your sweet spot in your lenses for that. And so I shot it at 5.6 because I wanted to be within the range of the, where it's going to be the sharpest image that I can possibly get. Because of that, I had to shoot it at a half second. And, you know, that's, that's going to require a tripod. And so, you know, I just, uh, you know, I put it on a tripod. I had a little intervalometer cable release for it as well. And so that reduces any camera shake. So I can shoot uh, low, uh, low, uh, low things like that. That's how I shoot all my night photography as well. But, you know, just a, a simple little tripod like this or can do, or actually, you know, I like my uh, Ravelli, which has got a ball head on it, which is a little sturdier and a little better and it's easier to control for things. But just a very simple tripod would be able to do this. Now, if you don't have a big uh, camera set up, you say, well, you know what? I don't have a DSLR like you do. I've just got an old point and shoot camera. If you've got what, what they call, you know, one of the super zooms, Sort of like this, this is my Lumix camera that I started out with when I was learning photography a few years ago. Uh, fantastic little camera, DMC FZ70, love it. It's a 60X if I turn this puppy on. Uh, I can uh, zoom this bad boy all the way out to 60X. The sun looks pretty big in that. And this, you know, you say, well, how do you get a solar filter on there? Just tape it. Just take it. You don't have to put a, a lens on, put it between solar lenses. Just use some scotch tape in several locations, four or five locations. Uh, and just tape it to the front where you know it's not coming off. That'd be good too. This one actually I can do. A, a, this is you know a optical zoom is out to 60x. Digital zoom will be out to 120x. Uh, that'll get you. Uh, the sun will fill the full frame if you do that. Uh, this one you know it's got intelligent auto, which is what most people with a point and shoot are going to do. This one does have a manual mode. If you know manual, I recommend shooting it in manual. Probably going to be better if you shoot it in RAW rather than just a straight JPEG if you know how to do that as well because you'll get better images processed out of that. So just a couple of tips for that. But again, your camera sensor is very sensitive, so it needs it needs those for, for your uh, imaging sensor not to get damaged just like... Uh, you know, just like our eyeballs, we'll need these uh, special glasses to be able to not get damaged. The, think of these solar filter paper that you can buy or to either make your own filter between two UV lenses or just tape it on. Think of that as the sort of the special glasses that you need for the eyes of your camera. All right. If you're using a telescope, by the way, you would need the exact same thing. So, you know, I got my 60 millimeter refractor here. Uh, I'm not going to be using my refractor as for that day. I'm just going to be using the DSLR. Uh, but, you know, if I didn't cut this out, the little four inch square would fit right over over my 60 millimeter refractor and I could tape it to that and get some great images there as well. And if you've got that, you can actually buy little things like this, which is a cell phone holder, uh, you know, and cell phone holders. Uh, this is another little great way that you can image things. All I have to do then is just sort of put this over my eyepiece, lock it down with a little screw, put my cell phone in there and just line my camera right up with my eyepiece and I can take some great shots. You may be able to get some great shots with your camera that way as well. This is only like six or seven bucks on Amazon to get one of these things. So it's a little super tip if you do have a telescope to be able to use for that as well. No matter what you do, uh, there's going to be some great things uh, come up with this. And, you know, I, unfortunately, we don't have totality with us here in the Southern Indiana right now, but I can show you just a little bit about what you would get. So the path of totality that it's going to take starts here in Oregon and goes all the way down to South Carolina. Again, we are not in it. But if we use NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory's website, and I'll put a link to this under the YouTube video, you can sort of visualize exactly what this is going to be. And so if I remove the slider back here, I can, I can take this then into the time of uh, about, yeah, right around just a little bit later than that right around in there roughly, is about your totality. And so this is what it would look like in Paoli, Indiana. You're going to be about 95% in Paoli. 
down here where I live in Spencer County, closer to the Ohio River, I'm going to be about 98%. So this is a visualization of what it might look like. Evansville, you're going to be very similar to that as well. If you're up in Bedford, you're only going to get about 94 to 95% totality up there. So again, it's going to be bright. Louisville, pretty much about the same thing. If you want totality, you got to go down again towards Hopkinsville, where you're going to have that full disc. you got to go somewhere down in southern Illinois or Kentucky to be able to do this. By the way, uh, never fear with this. If you want to see the totality like this uh, in 2024, we will have another option for that. Let me zoom back out. April 8th, 2024, the path of totality for another solar eclipse will come right across inner of Mexico, enter into Texas, and then exit up in Maine. And lo and behold, if I zoom in, look at this, most of southern Indiana right within the path of totality on that. So we just got to wait seven or so years to be able to get into totality. If you can, if you can drive and get down south, uh, it's going to be a traffic mess. But you're going to be able to see some things otherwise that you wouldn't. So again, you know, as far as to where, buy, where to buy these solar glasses, you need those. You can get them on Amazon. You may end up paying an arm and a leg right now uh, because of people jacking up prices on that. But, you know, you can get them at Walmarts too. I've seen them near the checkout lines. Uh, you may have to shop around because they may be selling out here. Uh, so local libraries pass these things out sometimes too. I know TV stations are doing events leading up to it, so you might check your local TV stations and see if they have events where you can get your free pair as well. Again, the weather forecast, you know, I think it looks pretty decent that day overall. Uh, it looks like a sun and clouds mix, so but we expect that in August. We don't usually get very many clear days in August. August is usually humid. That humidity creates clouds during the afternoon. That's likely what we're going to see. Some of the modeling does indicate that there are some rain chances that day, so we may have to fight some stray thunderstorms. But again, uh, as it stands right now, we wouldn't give it more than a 30% chance. So it does look fairly decent at this point for us to see at least part of this, even if we can't see you know, the full uh, three hours worth with a crystal clear sky. We ought to at least be able to see some of it around here in southern Indiana the way things are looking right now. So if you have any other tips, be sure to you can put them at, at comments at the bottom of this video on YouTube. Uh, but that sort of uh, gives you a little bit of an overview and I hope this has been helpful to you. Be sure to check out uh, the blog post on southernindianaweather.com if you're accessing this directly from YouTube. I do a daily blog there with uh, weather updates for, southern in, uh, for the southern Indiana weather area. Be sure to check that out. And of course, you, if you're already on there, you're seeing this at the bottom of that as well. But uh, be sure to check that blog out and read that for some additional details, additional explanation on what the solar eclipse actually is and all of that. Uh, one final thing. Uh, I haven't done many videos lately, but that we will be getting back to that. Uh, we've had a lot of busyness going on over the summer and attempting some other things. And uh, I will be getting back to the long range update soon. Give it another month or so and uh, we'll be back to that.